Hi, everybody. We're live. Welcome. Cookbacks for Immigration coming to you from Adel, Georgia. Usually I you see me on Thursdays, but today I get the opportunity to join you. Um, Mr. Cook has a scheduling conflict and I am filling in. So um, we'll give people a few minutes or seconds to join while we get um, the algorithm to update people that we are live. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you updates on what's going on in the immigration world. Of course, we are um, watching to see what's gonna happen with Build Back Better. Is it going to pass? Is it um, even gonna be voted on at this point? So let's see. And of course, I'll be able to answer your questions live. So feel free to ask any questions you may have for all of those. Hi, welcome to everybody who's joining us. I'm Elizabeth Mathern. I am not Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook wasn't able to um, join us today. He's busy with something very important. So I'm filling in. I'm gonna give you guys the um, immigration updates for today, for this week. Um, these include a uh, victory on one of our litigation cases, the latest on Build Back Better, what we're hearing, whether um, anything's going to happen on that. We also have, um, oh, big news from here in South Georgia. I don't know if um, people saw, we have a big indictment of two dozen people down here in South Georgia related to human trafficking. Um, people, the, the allegations in the indictment are almost out of a movie. Um, people being forced to pick crops at gunpoint, being housed inside of a compound with electric fences, um, fatalities as a result of the trafficking, just really, really awful dark stuff. But um, the Department of Justice has indicted two dozen people after I think like a three year investigation. So um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, DV Lotto, um, diversity visa. I don't really have any updates on diversity visa. There's questions whether um, backlog provisions were sent to the parliamentarian or not. I, I don't know about that. Um, the only updates that I heard on diversity visa litigation was that the Biden administration decided to appeal um, in, in the case that uh, we got a ruling. So, of course, they waited to almost the, the deadline and um, did file that they were going to appeal. Um, OK, so feel free to post your questions. Feel free to post your highs um, and tell us where you're watching from. Uh, again, if you're just joining, my name is Elizabeth Mathern. I am in our South Georgia office. And um, I am halfway between Tifton and Valdosta, right off I-75. So I don't know if you heard about the indictment that came out of the Southern District um, of Georgia, where about two dozen people were indicted on federal conspiracy charges for human smuggling and labor trafficking um, on several South Georgia farms. This indictment lists activities that spanned across, I think, five or six counties in South Georgia, very close to where we are. Um, the operation was was dubbed Blooming Onion because it focused um, one of the crops, one of the main crops that people were picking were the world famous Vidalia onions. Those are a special sweet onion that's grown here in South Georgia. If you have ever driven by Vidalia, you can smell the onions. So um, a lot of onions are grown there. And a lot of farmers rely on the H2A uh, temporary worker program to bring in workers to help harvest their crops. So that's what um, allegedly this group of people were utilizing the H2H program to bring people on false promises and false, um, uh, I guess, false promises 
that they would be able to work, send money home, et cetera. So people injured on uh, temporary work visas and they were made to um, live in places with basically almost no clean water, plumbing, minimal food. Um, they had to dig out the onions by bare hands. This is what's alleged in the indictment. Um, they also, there are allegations that people were um, forced to pick crops with a gun pointed at them. So very, very disturbing. Now, we, we know that these kind of working conditions happen. Um, this is unusual because we are seeing a large scale indictment. The indictment also says that almost $200 million was um, taken as, I guess, profit or as part of this scheme. So if they had minimal um, costs, they weren't paying the workers and weren't treating them fairly or properly, then they just kept the money for themselves, bought trucks and land and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. I think that um, it's great that the government is... Uh, putting resources towards investigating these types of crimes and um, holding employers, alleged employers, um, to their feet to the fire to make sure that they're taking care of the guest workers that they have promised they would take care of. So human trafficking um, can also result in immigration protection. So if someone is a victim of human trafficking, they potentially can qualify for a T visa, which is um, a similar to a U visa. There's no law, uh, law enforcement certification required. So you can just apply directly to USCIS without that uh, law enforcement certification telling about what happened to you. It's a confidential um, application and it is can be filed basically in private. So if you or someone you know is the victim of human trafficking or potential human trafficking situation, there is a national human trafficking hotline. And it does seem like this administration is taking uh, this seriously. I'm posting the national human trafficking hotline in the comments for y'all. OK. All right. Let, so that was a huge, um, a huge story down here in South Georgia. Um, we will see what happens. It may take uh, a long time for those cases to work their way through the justice system and see um, if people start pleading guilty or if they go to trial, what kind of sentences they end up getting, et cetera. So um, Moving on, let's talk about what happened recently with our one of our litigation cases. We had a significant victory. Trains going by. OK, so um, as some of you may know, we have a we have a lawsuit challenging the ability from multiple employers to put in registrations for a single H-1B worker. Um, and that is related to the fact that that sort of setup um, allows space for fraudulent actors. So um, there is um, that lawsuit pending. We are working on that. I, I'm certain with our impact litigation team, I believe, um, and maybe even with AILA, which is the Immigration Lawyers Association. Um, the victory that uh, is of note is that the Biden administration filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit and that was denied. Um, and it seems like everything I heard was that the denial was very clear that this was um, a legitimate lawsuit that needed to be heard and um, evaluated. So that's great. That means that's going forward. The government's motion to dismiss was slapped down and the lawsuit continues. All right. Also, um, USCIS is temper announced that they're temporarily waiving the 60 day rule for civil surgeon uh, signatures. So this is um, always one of those practical challenges of when do you get your medical exam and is it still valid and expire 
did it expire, et cetera. So what they announced is um, USCIS is temporarily waiving until September 30th of 2022, the requirement that the civil surgeon uh, sign form I-693 and um, no more than 60 days before filing an application. So in other words, um, it can have been signed before that, more time before that, um, before it's submitted. So that's good news in case your application takes a little bit longer to pull together for some reason, um, you won't have to get a new medical exam. Okay. Um, also in other news, oh, let's talk about Build Back Better real quick. So, um, there are indicators. So we've all been like hanging on the edge of our seats, hoping that we were going to get an answer from the parliamentarian on whether Plan C was going to pass the bird bath or the bird test or whatever you call it. Um, and it just hasn't come through. We haven't heard anything. So what we're hearing today is indications that they might not even you know, try to push this to a vote. They might hold off on it till the end of, um, sorry, till the beginning of next year to try to vote on it. So losing momentum, losing steam, this may not even happen at all at this point. So um, some people are saying perhaps immigration reform is dead in the water, build back better in and of itself is dead in the water. The indications that say that they're going to put off Build Back Better until next year, also coming out with them. Um, and they plan to focus on voting rights legislation. I don't know. The Democrats, um, it's very frustrating to watch um, the level of sort of political and practical legislative incompetence. Um, 75% of people in the U.S. support um, this type of immigration reform. In fact, even, even bigger steps at immigration reform, pathway to citizenship, um, permanent residency for DACA, all of that is supported by a vast majority of voting of their constituents, yet they can't get it done. So um, that's where we are with that. Okay. Um, Let's see, the E-Verify consolidates user profiles, profile screen. That's really something for employers who are, who are doing the E-Verify. Um, it's supposed to make things a little bit more efficient and easier to view. Um, the consolidated elements include user profile information, updating, changing a password, and updating, changing a password, challenge questions and answers. That, um, I guess may make some people's lives a little bit easier. Okay, so let's see. I don't really have any questions today. And I don't think I have any other updates. Let me look at one more thing. Um, transitional parole for uh, members of uh, sorry, um, Nationals of the Mariana Islands is being extended. Will be extended without interruption through June 30th, 2022. Um, and people can application for the 765 um, people can file if they need to. That's about it. Okay, let's see. Then why is FUBAR an immigration in why is, is it FUBAR and immigration is 78% support us? Well, Joe, that's a good question. I think it's related to how our um, legislative process works. Um, our it seems like our our Leaders are more concerned about climate change solutions are here. What is that? And Hitachi is partnered with Rainforest Hold on, folks. to bring them to life in the cloud. Learn more about advanced environmental solutions. I don't know today. if you can hear that. I don't know what's talking on my computer. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> 
I think it has more to do with the fact that um, the people in power that we've elected are not like actually doing work. They're more worried about um, playing politics. So yeah, I mean, right? Um, I guess that's why we just need to, those of us who are citizens and have the power to vote, need to make sure that we are um, voting for people who we think will actually do stuff. So that's um, where we are. It's a really uh, polarized situation right now. But thank you for your question, Joe. We'll keep watching and hopefully something changes. All right, folks. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I um, don't really have any other updates. Um, we're still watching Diversity Lotto. No, it's okay. It's totally okay. Thank you for your question, though. I appreciate it. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to run. Thank you so much. I keep watching what's going to happen with this parliamentarian issue. Who knows? We'll see. Um, and we will be back. I won't be doing, usually I do Facebook Live on Thursday, so I won't be doing it Thursday. I'm going to take a break for the next two weeks. So I'll miss you guys. I hope you have a great Christmas if I don't see you or talk to you. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye.